This is Dark City Radio, as I'm sure you know. If you are tuned in at the moment, you'll be aware of that. Uh, my name's Bob. Uh, well, my name's Paul, really. Commonly known as Bob. And uh, we are joined this evening by uh, our Robo Whippy, who's kind of always there in the background causing a few problems for us. Uh, we've got Bob, member of our crew, and quickly becoming a member of the Dark City crew, we suspect, is uh, Mel. Now, if you don't know Mel, uh, she's, she's my favourite truther at the moment, I must admit. But I'm very fickle. Uh, I am very fickle. But she is. Uh, I heard a show. She was on with Dom last week. Great stuff. On Sunday. And now she's back again with us. All coincidental. Dom's late. Uh, he's travelling, you know his situation, he's, he's moving about the country all the time. Uh, he is coming, he has contacted us, but he's going to be about an hour late. So we thought we'd split it up. Um, we can have a bit of a chat, we can have a bit of a phone in. Uh, if you want to ring in the show, you can do. Just have myself, Bob's Backyard, to your Skype, and Carlos will bring you in. And uh, you, can ask, uh, you can ask us stuff, or just tell us what's on your mind because that's what a lot of it's about so go on Mel do you want to uh, do you want to take the microphone and uh, introduce yeah, yourself no all over again <laughs> well uh, hello to everyone on Dark City Radio it seems very weird to be uh, greeting everyone on a different radio station for a second time in two days but it's great to be back with you guys and um, yeah I had a really good interview with uh, Dom on Sunday night he's um, definitely a very astute journalist he asked some good questions and um, it's uh, good to find sort of, um, I, I call uh, the people like myself and Dom fringe media. We're not the alternative media because I think the alternative media has become just the alternative to the lies, you know, the alternative lies, as uh, I've, I've come to call it. So uh, I, I, put, I position myself um, as fringe media, as I think Dom is, and um, really, uh, you know, we... For me, I, I don't do this for any other reason than I really want to know what's going on out there and um, I don't want to be distracted with nonsense and I found as, as I've gone along my journey, I've shared what I've come to know with various people and of course I took a lot of people on that journey on Sunday night. Yeah, you took me on it. I was with you for most. Well, I was actually um, producing that show, um, so obviously I'm listening to what's, what's going on and mm. um, I, I've been duped by the numbers game uh, on more than one occasion um, I was led to believe we had thousands of people listening to us and uh, nobody um, nobody responded I mean when you get 6.1 million v viewers on the BBC television mail on a Friday night at 7 o'clock you've got a 10 minute slot you expect to get some kind of response at least something at least some drunken crackhead telling you you're full of poo poo when you get nothing, you get suspicious. Then you get <laughs> suspicious. Um, so yeah, I, I've um, through some some helps actually. Uh, a guy called Phil Thinker, um, who, who's kind of one of the researchers behind the scenes at Dark City, and we have a few. Um, he looked at the numbers. Um, Robo Whippy had a look at a few of the streams, and we had a look at the difference between what was really happening live and what they were telling us the average monthly viewers were. There's a massive difference between what I consider to be the true data, how many people are actually live listening, and the average monthly figures. Uh, and you can find this out just by typing in setting up your own radio station in YouTube, the way the media portrays it. Um, one viewer um, is half an hour. So if you sit on your own channel for 24 hours, one person, you've become 48 viewers. Then you times the 48 by 30 days, and you've got your average viewing figures. It's a con. Um, it troubled me because I was meeting some really cool people, putting some really rock-solid information out. I mean, with a lot of this, you've got to walk your own path. Um, but they were giving people solid advice and solid information, and they were only getting one or two people hitting the button or downloading their, their, their info packs not realising that perhaps there's only 100, maybe 200 people listening. And if you can get 2%, you know, or 1% of people to react to what you're putting out there, that's massive. Those numbers are massive. And, and to me, that's more important. I'd sooner have 100, no, there's 100 people listening, uh, and five of them are, are actually in on it, than be cooked up these numbers that I think I've got 30,000 people tuned in listening to the show. 
uh, and it only turns out to be a few. So I think truth is, is pretty relative. Uh, and I reckon the numbers uh, within the so-called truth movement, and I use the big inverted commas, have been cooked up. We've been led to believe there's a lot more people actually active than there actually is. And this has led, led us to be complacent. Um, and we have got to make a stand um, for peace and unity. I, I don't mean with any, uh, any kind of violence at all. I think if we ed edge towards that even slightly, we're, we're, we're entering a field where, well, it'll be a massacre. It's just a massacre. That, that's playing, you might say, the, the demonic game. So I'm right with what a lot of you said, you said, Mel. I haven't done the research like you had. I've had my suspicions. I go off my feelings uh, and my intuition. I haven't got time to do the research. Uh, I'm an activist. I like to have action to promote further action. And uh, you promote action, Mel. You do. Well, let me just say, I don't actually have the time to do the research either. How I've come to know these things really is through trial and error and sometimes through some really ghastly experiences. I mean, truly ghastly. Um, so much so that my life was in danger, kind of thing. So this is how I've come to know the truth. Um, and it's not because I've actually had to delve into it. It's because um, if you are genuinely on the right side and you're genuinely doing this from the right place, um, you are going to learn very quickly that um, not everyone in the supposed truth movement is working from that place. Yeah, sometimes. Totally agree. Oh, yeah, I've learned that at my cost on more than one occasion. Yeah, 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 me too, big time. And sadly, with some of the biggest names in the truth movement. I don't know if it's a sad thing or not. Um, I, I think a lot of people shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, I've heard a lot of people speak. Um, I've, had, I've been inspired by people, and then I've looked at them and gone, oh, my God, why have you done that? <laughs> what, what, how could I get inspired by Oh, dearie me. Uh, and it's happened to me on loads. But you, we've got to take the inspiration, you know. Um, we've got to go with the inspiration. We can't keep allowing... Well, they're like fallen heroes to me. You know, they, they inspired me to, to get on the street and shout down a megaphone. This doesn't do any good, but it, I tell you what, it kindred my soul. <laughs> you know, it did me the world of good. Um, walking up the middle of the street before the Olympic flame, embracing the police, telling them they were representing Manchester and they should put a smile on the face or they were getting a hug. It was wonderful. Um, I had a great time, a real good time. And then, you know, you hear about other things. I mean, you know, Dom, I mean, I love what Dom does and how he gets out there. But, you know, we went out shopping that day and before we knew it, just because we wanted to what? Video? We want to use a video camera. We have to be assaulted by these people who, who think they've got some authority. And it's not as if it's um, there isn't anything we can do about it. You know, it, it, there's babies being killed in far off countries. We know that. We know that. You know, we know our governments have a hand in it. We know that. But we can't do anything about that. There's nothing we, we can do. Uh, we can do something about the enforcement of authority on our own doorsteps. Um, you know, we don't have to wait for these people to give us authority to have positive, creative action. That's where I've got with it now. Um, I'm looking, really, my little thing is to find the so-called truthers that are willing to embrace change. Because most of them aren't. They seem to want to continue re-manifesting the same old thing, forming groups inside the groups and calling it unity. To me, it's preposterous. Um, the definition of insanity is to repeat, it, to repeat the same and expect a different outcome. Um, we've got to start from somewhere new, in my opinion. We can't keep creating from this twisted emotional perception that we have. Not to say that we can't do it. Of course we can. We're the human race, for God's sake. No, we're men and women of Earth. Let me get that right. We're not sub at all. We're men and women of Earth. And amongst us, we're capable of, we're, we're all sorts. We're beyond what we can imagine. When we work together, there is nothing we can't achieve. Nothing. 
Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Um, a famous British TV psychologist by the name of Angela Matanda, she um, works on British television in sort of these reality shows as a psychologist, counselling people. She once said to me, you know, you won't believe how afraid of success people really are because it means self-responsibility. And that always stuck with me. Um, you know, I learned a lot in my mainstream media days in London. And I think that is so true because we are sitting in a precipice now and I put some information forward in the last show with regards to the One People's Public Trust where quite literally we have been given the power to take things back. And all of a sudden you've got these people who have been um, playing, you know, putting out information, putting out information, putting out information. Suddenly this information makes everything they're putting out null and void because nothing they're putting out matters now. And you won't believe how they are hanging to their own islands. It's like, okay, we've suddenly got the solution, but it means a threat to what, you know, now they suddenly have to stop the battle and actually start the solutions. Some people are so addicted to the battle and so addicted to the drama that they're not even looking for the solutions. And I think a lot of the alternative media, they just feed that and they feed into the confusion. And ultimately that feeds into the dark agenda. Totally agree. Totally, the focus of energy, I think this is, can be paramount to, uh, what would you call it, the evolution, paramount to evolution. We are being manipulated to focus on many things we're completely powerless to do anything about. Um, the media stream that comes through feeds us this concoction of murder, death and tyranny and then glamorizes it all. You know, so I'm right with you on that. I, I'm actually, you know, I'm convinced I'm convinced that it's almost like there's a spiritual war going on that some people are aware of. And I, I, I don't really like the word or the term spiritual. I, I'm not spiritual. You know, I, I fart, I break wind, I swear, I sleep with women. You know, I mean, you know, I, I'm not um, like the God-fearing uh, representation, far from it. But I am certainly becoming more and more aware of, of how, uh, what a difference the focus of my energy us. I mean, after all, energy goes where it's focused. Um, the human body produces more energy per square inch than the sun. I mean, do <laughs> you know, when you look at some of these, these facts, it's like, wow, wh what happens to it all? You know, um, it, is the space that divides us completely empty? Does my body finish at my skin? Do you know, I ask myself these questions, you know, I... Do I affect the environment? Well, you sit in a room and you bring in an angry, frustrated, annoyed person and sit them there in the corner and people will be, ugh, ugh, it's, it's a bit strange. I mean, they did placebo tests with LSD in America back in the 60s um, where they, they only gave a third of the people in the room the actual LSD, but all of them had hallucinations. I mean, they've done to the fact where men on, on death row... Um, they've actually led them to believe that they've been, had the wrist slit and they've died. The actually placebo effect of the consciousness is capable of killing the individual. If that focus of energy could be used in a creative manner, and anyone that's ever jammed in music, uh, an artist, um, um, anybody who does tapestry or paintings or sculpture, they'll get exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's beyond us. It's not that we're not part of it. We are all uniquely connected together. Like I say, I don't know how and how that is relative to everyone, um, but I can't deny the focus of our energy would seem to be manipulated. We're being disempowered and then we're focusing our energies on demonic ritual and then complaining when they're successful. Well, firstly, let me uh, compliment what you said there by saying that there's a big difference between uh, religion and spirituality. And I kind of always tongue-in-cheek say to the religious people just to get a rise out of them, you know, a religion is for people who are afraid of going to hell and spirituality is for people who's, who have already been there. And like I said on the show on Sunday, we evolve through struggle. You know, we need to go through hell sometimes to find our who we really are, to dig down, you know, beyond the surface and really um, be, uh, become one with what we truly are. And it's easy to lose yourself, you know. Um, I've done it. I, I lost myself and had to go to great lengths to find myself, which is part of the awakening process. And it's got nothing to do with religion. We are all spiritual beings. You know, it's not a case of one person is spiritual or not. We are spiritual. That is it. 
how we choose to acknowledge that, well, it's up to each individual. And definitely, I think there's a spiritual war going on. But it's it's not as obvious as one side against the other, because you have to remember, if we are looking at this sort of spiritual perspective, um, you know, the light and the dark are both part of creation, and they both serve a purpose, and one cannot exist without the other. Um, all creation happens within the balance of light and dark. Wow. I get into light, you, you know, man. You know, I am. Like I say, I mean, I can see why it's not popular, you know, but hey, I'm not here for popularity. That's, that's, not, that's, that's not what I'm about, you know what I mean? I, I'm here to find my, my own little position in this, whatever it is we're experiencing, this illusion in, in, in the delusion, you know. Um, I really am. We've got Bob with us. Bob, Bob do, you want to, do you want to chip anything in here, mate? Um, well, if we could go back to the People's Trust bit, I did go and have a look at the website, and I was a little bit concerned that the only way that you could look at their uh, video materials using Microsoft Silverlight, and that uh, everything was on PDF, so you actually had to download everything to read it. And I found that a little bit concerning, and I, I didn't know whether Mel had any idea why that was. Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know why you have concerns about that. We put My book is on PDF on my website. It doesn't indicate anything at all. Um, the reason they've got the stuff up the way they have is that's just the way they've been able to manage it, their technical capacities. Certainly Heather's, I know, is very limited. She's in Morocco. I can barely get a decent Skype connection to her. So I, even, I mean, when my husband runs a web building company, even uh, the website, we had a look at it, and it's a very basic template. It's nothing complicated at all. So I think they've done what they can with the technical capacities they have, much like we do, um, which is limited within the financial restraints that we have. So I'm, I think really, uh, if you want to look deeper for, for things, uh, perhaps ask, is there any money involved or whatever, actually look for things that are might be an issue, bring them forward, like, no, there's no money involved, because what Heather has done, effectively in foreclosing on near enough the entire world, okay, she could have used that from a position to, to gain for herself, instead what she's done is she's bequeathed it back to the people. The people's trust belongs to us, you, me, everybody. It doesn't belong to anyone. No one stands to gain more than anybody from this. And that's why it's fail-safe. It's not about anyone controlling it. Are we looking at, are we looking at uh, possess it to set it free here, Mel? Is that kind of the idea of the people's trust? I haven't had time to look at it, um, but I, got what you, I heard what you said about it. Um, and a lot of us have, have kind of worked with freeing of land that... It cannot be owned. And I mean, I know it's in a situation where it is being intellectually possessed on paper. Um, I'm aware of that. I've been, you know, my own little uh, local, uh, you might say thorn. I am a thorn in the side of my local authority, so-called. <laughs> um, I'm quite proud, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm aware of the steal it. So to me, it was almost like she was intellectually stealing it back and then setting it free. Uh, I've done this with Chief Rent. Um, and if anybody is in the position to buy the rights to charge the rent on the property, known as chief rent in the UK, uh, done a lot in the north of England, then do that uh, and make sure you set the, rate, the, the chargeable value at zero. Uh, in a hundred years' time, or however long, normally they run for 99 years and the current year, so it's actually 100-year lease. Um, and that's your rights to charge the rent. Now, that rent is based upon what was charged. So in 100 years' charge, it will be worthless. Um, I know it's a convoluted way of setting land free. And it was a while ago, 1998, when I put it into practice. And I could not get one single solicitor. I tried them all to write up uh, a simple letter uh, to say there would be no more rent charged upon the two adjacent properties. Um, because it's a um, the, the rent the chargeable rent is for the three properties mine and the two adjacent to me, and they wouldn't do it. Uh, eventually, one of them said, "Look, if that catches on, we'll be out of work," and that really kind of was the worst thing he could have said to me. Really, uh, it really was. Uh, I knew then that it was just sheerly intellectual theft. And we're talking about twelve pounds a year is the chargeable rent then. And um, that would go up in increasements, you know, um, linked uh, upon the inflation at the time. So in a hundred years' time, 
uh, and you take every single terraced house in Manchester, it's a lot of money. And the money isn't made by collecting the rent, it's by them foreclosing on it. That's how they make the money in the long run. Yeah, when you've had experience of this and you know it's true and you know these people, and anybody in the UK thinks that this may be some kind of fear tactics, not at all. Uh, have a look at the operations of a company called Cymar, uh, about 15, what we are now, yeah, it should be about 15 years ago. Uh, and they were actually for closing on people's property uh, over the chief rent. So, yeah, these are things they've already attempted to do. If we're going to be blind enough to think that they won't attempt it on a bigger scale, that really would be preposterous. I mean, you've well, got to... What, can I just say something? What, yeah, what you sure. Is there's nothing like the OPPT. Okay, I'll read you exactly what uh, Heather said to me. First of all, what she's done has never been attempted or done by anyone before, simply because no one, ha no one has ever challenged the Vatican's claim over our minds, our bodies and souls, okay? There were three trusts set up in the th 13th and 14th century comprising uh, collectively called the Sestoy KV Trusts, and what she's managed, no one has ever challenged them. And by law, you can challenge things, but no one has ever actually stood up to challenge these things, okay? So they've remained in perpetuity forever on, and as a result, all our tax money, everything eventually ends up at the Vatican and all the controlling bodies, etc. But this is what she wrote to me, and I did want to share this with you because it, it explains it more uh, a little bit more from her own words. Um, she goes, the OPPT used their systems to lawfully and legally enter, um, lawfully and leg legally enter what is because they unlawfully and illegally entered into what isn't. As a result, their whole system collapsed from heaven to earth and everything in between. OPPT used the systems they used to accomplish this. It was very simple once you knew where the pressure points were. And the fact that the people paid for all the systems, the people took them back to prime, zero point, and the powers that be or were in all their dimensions were left with nothing. That one people's public trust and check and see for yourself. All her documentation is legally and lawfully entered into the public record as standing legal and lawful documents because she's, you know, a legal a person herself. She's traveled all over the world, worked in law. So she's got a, a broad perspective, particularly she's worked with the Uniform Commercial Code. And her story will come out in time, but she's actually worked with very high ranking government officials, which is why she knows so much. So just to protect her for the moment, she's actually hiding out in Morocco with the four kids and her husband and basically trying to get the system set up from there. So it, it's not, it's, it, this is, I'm not guaranteeing anything, to be honest with you. I, I'm like everybody else in this. You know, I'm very excited. If this what it seems to be, I mean, this truly can be it in terms of our freedom and our lawful you know, tools with which we can rightfully fight the system um, with its own rules and own stipulations. It set it up so that it could work in a certain way, and we've basically used its own structure against it. And if they don't acknowledge what we're using, it means that their structure theoretically doesn't exist. Okay? So it, it, they defunct themselves by not acknowledging the documentation. And this is where you, what you need to understand. And she has, and you can actually go and check, she's um, bequeathed something like... Um, that she's gotten all these trusts set up so that all the countries of the world can activate which, something that's called creator value activation centers, which basically we can, all the value in the gold and all the value in the money is there because we put it there. The, the true value lies in us. I mean, gold in the ground has no value. It only has value once human beings have pulled it out the ground and said, okay, that's worth so much. We give it the value. Right, true value only ever really lies in us, and that's what she's done. She's brought the value value back to us. So it's an interesting dynamic, and it's an interesting time. I'm not promising any guarantees from it. What I'm saying is this is very interesting, and it can't be ignored because the, the sheer amount of people with um, any kind of legal knowledge, this, like people like Santos Bonacci, people like Lisa M. Harrison, who are both very good journalists in their own respect, very well researched, very popular um, on the internet with the work they're doing, they have jumped all over this and they know probably as much, if not more, um, than I do. Um, and I've got a pretty good legal understanding. So I've written books about, you know, common law and all that sort of stuff. And when I read through it, I was going, this is it. She, I cannot believe someone has actually done it because it's not a new concept. We've been thinking about how to do this for the longest time. 
In the meantime, someone that we didn't know somewhere in the world was actually doing it. So there we go. Someone's finally bloody got them. And we got them <laughs> by the balls. Uh, yeah, we, um, we, we've had a bit of fun here. Um, just, just before we drift off, um, I, I get your explanation now and your clarification, really, of the website. Um, when we put Dark City together, we, we used what we had available. And I think that is a lot of it. Um, you've got to use what's available in your area. My, my old aquaponics ideology, people said it can't be done here, it can't be done there, this won't work there. And my argument is, well, try it, because it does work. You know, all oh, them plants won't grow. Put different plants in. Change it to suit your environment. Um, because if we change to suit the environment, it's a damn sight a lot easier than keep saying it doesn't work. We do actually a lot of the time. I mean, you just put people off because a lot of people use Linux and they can't access the information. So maybe we could get that information downloaded and uh, look it over and put it into a format for them and where people can read it. And that's where RoboHippie might come in. Um, well, can, as a trustee, you are a trustee of the One People's Public Trust. You have every right to do whatever you want with the information to make it more accessible. You don't even have to ask for permission. Yeah, I don't have to ask permission for anybody for authority mail, and I haven't done. Um, that's what we've actually done here. I, and to be honest, um, it's terrified all of them. The, the ITV, BBC, uh, Kerry Cassidy, you know, so-called whistleblowing. Um, nah, I didn't want to touch it because it's current, it's ongoing. We've caught them lying, cheating, deceiving. They've done this all over, the, all over Britain, definitely, all over Earth, this intellectual theft of land where they, they put... They say they're putting it to good use and that, that it creates employment. It doesn't create employment. It decentralises, breaks up small communities and we lose a value of being able to, to grow food. What greater value could you have as a human being than food? If you're going to have a value, personally, uh, I think we should strip away this feudal system, trying to outdo one another, free up the land to the people. How, we, how, do we, how do we achieve it? Like, well, we just didn't wait for the authority to do it. We went and did it. Do the people want to talk about it? Do they want to get involved? No, they're terrified. They're living in fear. Yes. Um, they really are, and, and, and I appreciate that. The United Kingdom is Her Majesty's asylum. And just because, just because the people who are at the head of the asylum do crazy things, then the people who are living in the asylum think this is crazy. They're insane. They have repeatedly done the same over and over and over again for generation after generation and expected a different outcome. That isn't my interpretation. That's what's happened. We can't. We can't go in their arena in my mind. My, we, we need to create our own arena. We're entering in that, and I, I get what you're saying. People have to make a stand against this fictitious takeover by, by merchant law. It really is, by acts and statutes that have got nothing to do with us. We've been bought and sold on the international market. I mean, anybody's got any doubt about this, uh, try moving. Try getting out of Britain. Go, go, and make, go and do the research I have. It's going to cost you money. You know, you, 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 you've got a tradable value, literally. Um, oh, well, we're all European. You can go over to Europe. Go and try it. Find out what happens. Uh, you can go for so long. If you're receiving any form of of pension or benefits in the UK, you've got 28 days, you've got to return. It's like, what? 28 days? That's a bit surreal. No, you've got to come back. Um, it's a prison. It really yep. is a prison. And, you know, I'm happy to be inside the prison now. I, I recognise the cell. I'm not trying to break down the bars anymore. Why? You know, my door's open. The key's been, I can walk in and out whenever I want. Whenever I want. Why do I keep coming back? You know, what is this urge that I've got? It's my community. They don't know. They really don't know. They built a hill in the middle of the town, Mel, and they can't see it. They really can't see it. You've got to take the people who live here and say, that hill there, and every one of them goes, where did that come from? They built it. They dumped it there, they had, and nobody can see it. £45 a tonne they were paying to dump rubbish there. I mean, nobody can see it. They're all terrified of reporting. Why? Because it leads right back through the Gray family. 
to the Vatican. <laughs> Gladio. 3,000 SS troops. An entire brigade. And their hierarchy given status of freemen of the land of England. Nazi Britain. And they've coerced us for years. Those roads do lead to the Vatican. Have a look. The rat lines. They didn't just come here. They went to Australia. They went to New Zealand. They went to America. And the favourite one of them all, South America. Let's not forget your homeland, Neva Melee. Because <laughs> they went down there as well. They did a lot of damage. You know, it's funny about the Vatican. and uh, it, The original Cape Colony was founded by French Huguenots who were largely Calvinist Protestants trying to escape Vatican persecution in uh, the middle of the 15th and uh, the 14th and 15th century. So the funniest thing is that they, they tried to get away and they went to like the furthest place they could find, um, you know, away from which was South Africa. And true enough, when the British came down, they obviously, you know, we've always known that Britain is um, a subsidiary of the Vatican. And when Britain came in and sort of invaded and took over South Africa, well, that's why the, the Boers, who were descended from the Protestant Huguenots, um, fought a battle against the British because they'd, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd tried to escape Europe. They'd escaped to South Africa to get away from these guys. Now these guys were after them on their place, you know, where they had now established a republic for 200 years and they wanted the gold. So, yeah, you know, it's um, interesting, you know, South Africa is one of the best examples when you look at the global conspiracy of how it's played out because, um, you know, our resources, resource-wise, you know, we, could, we are one of the wealthiest countries in the world. We could power the entire world with the kind of resources that we have. But yet, you know, there's the largest divide between rich and poor. You know, it surpassed Brazil in 2006 as the, has, having the biggest gap between rich and poor. So I've, I've seen the extremes there it, it is you've, you've not seen poverty until you've been to south africa and i mean that i mean britain the the, the your council estates they're nothing nothing never seen it i it, there is nothing like seeing someone near enough sleeping in their own feces night after night because i've that's been to mumbai does that count sorry <laughs> i've been to mumbai <laughs> does that count have you been to Bangkok? And maybe I'll consider it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't yet. I, no, I haven't. Uh, no, India is pretty much yeah, third world. Third world poverty is is it's heartbreaking to see. It is absolutely and even well, worse. the happiest people I've met were the people who had nothing. The the you know the shine in their eyes and and I'm not. You know when I arrived when I arrived in India, them doors opened up and they went ritually. I had no choice. I suddenly become a member of the rich elite, something I'd stood against for years. And I realised, wow, I'm a member of the rich elite. And, and they drove it home. They drove that home. You know, I'm saying things like, oh, yeah, come to England, stay in my house, it'll be great. And they're laughing at me. They're laughing. They're going, what? We, we can't, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't even got a, a piece of paper to say we were born. They're so free. I mean, to us, they, they're in poverty, and I get that divide needs to be shattered. I, I'm with you, Mel, you know what I mean? It really does. But, you know, they're so happy. They can't get any debt. They haven't got a piece of paper to be able to have a name. They haven't got a name. I mean, we've got so much to learn from that. You know, all this defending of the name, you know, fictitious BS, really. Yeah. And, and we, we're waking up in all that. And we, we're coming from that standpoint. And we're feudal. We're trying to beat them. We're trying to beat them. We're trying to beat other people in the asylum who actually, probably, when they set off, and I don't know, maybe I'm going down the rabbit hole here, but I reckon these so-called politicians and policemen and the people who are in authority, I think they were trying to serve us. I think that's how they set off. I really do. I don't think any of them set off thinking, right, then I'm going to get into Parliament so I can murder people. I don't. I reckon we're very juvenile. And when you put us under that kind of pressure, we do quite demonic things. It's the pressure we all put one another on. I can't lay the blame at any one source. I really can't. If I'm going to lay that blame anywhere, then it'll sit on my shoulders. On my shoulders, you know. Uh, I can't lay it on anyone else. For me, that blame game's got to end, Mel. It really has. Um, well, we're, we're living in segregation and we're forming more groups to form unity. To me, it's preposterous. And people like yourself speaking out about the truth movement, because I've took a beating, Mel. 
<laughs> for speaking out and what I know to be true. And okay, you know, what am I doing? I'm just explaining things differently. That doesn't mean I'm bad. You yeah. know, it doesn't mean that I've come to destroy their world. Okay, what I'm talking about will destroy their world. But look, no, they won't destroy the world. You know, they'll still have a place to live and they'll still have food and everything else. But the way of living will end forever. It will end forever. They will not longer be able to live um, feeling happy about murdering people. We'll all feel it. I mean, that's the way I see it. The more each one of us takes back our own, our own power, if you like, our own mastery, uh, we focus on ourselves. The more we do that, the harder it is for them to feed on us. Well, it's interesting what you said about blame. You know, in, in blaming others, we actually give up our chance to grow as individuals. You know, people don't realize the gift they give away in dealing with your shit. <laughs> you know, passing it on to others and making it their fault. Really, you don't you, you don't evolve emotionally um, or, or or maturely uh, as a spiritual person. So there's a lot to be learned from that on a deeper level. And I think also a lot of the stuff that comes to us is there to help us learn. You know, we mustn't necessarily look at the darkness, as I've said, as um, completely inane or, where, you know, where does it come from? Ultimately, the world is a reflection of our own selves, you know, and what, you know, we see in others that we don't like is normally things we don't like about ourselves. Oh, I like that. You're dead right, you know. As a male living here on this planet, right, if I don't like it, do you know when somebody says something and I don't like it? It's normally <laughs> right. It's normally right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know, I mean, it is. You know, I can't help it. Uh, I might be quite feminine in my ways, right? That don't mean I'm, I'm homosexual. I'm a man, right? But, you know, I'm a house builder. I'm a home builder. I like to make it clean and tidy and stuff. So I'm quite feminine in my ways. Uh, I don't have an issue with that. That's quite sexist saying that's just a feminine trait, actually. I think it's a, a more men could do with being like that, to be well, honest. Well, you know what I mean? For me, the feminine energy is the destroyer. Um, she has the ability to rise up into my consciousness and end my bullshit forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? She really can. And the masculine energy is the one that's consciously creating. It can't help itself. That's what it does. You know, it's got to keep doing it. It's got to keep creating. And the feminine just turns up and goes, <laughs> Okay. So for me, I don't want to project onto a female that energy, nor do I want to project the masculine onto a male. I am neither male nor female. Internally, that energy is both. I am both. So therefore, without, I have no need for the destruction of the feminine, nor do I need to create from the masculine. But in that sense, I'm not, my mind's not going. I can calm my mind down and settle into the physical body. There was a lot in pop magic a while ago about the human consciousness being adolescent. I, well, I'm pretty sure we've been messing with things that really were beyond our consciousness at the time. And they've left us with a few scars. I mean, people go in about alien abduction and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, look, I can see them right here and now. You know, they're not alien to me. They're not extraterrestrial beings. You know, the Grey family have been alive and kicking around here in, in England for thousands of years. They are pretty emotionless in their actions of stripping away the land, you know. And so to me, these things aren't alien. They're alive and they're well and they're on this planet now. In fact, they're probably more consciously aware of you than you are of them. <laughs> Very well put, actually. They are not alien. They're, they've all, they're here. They've always been here. Mm, definitely. You know, that to me is, is almost us giving our energy over and to something beyond our consciousness. And we're using a structure of education which is actually based in the 1900s. <laughs> um, we need to restructure the way we, we, we think, um, the way we, we interact socially. And we are coming from the feudal system. We've got to accept that and not turn upon the ones that have given us this opportunity. Because whichever way you look at this, the the so-called agents of the New World Order or Disorder or whichever you you render to, um, you know, whether it's the Vatican's demonic deeds. And there's no doubt there, you know, anyone that actually covers up paedophiles in my mind just should be taken out and loved a little bit. Because they have lost love completely. But, you know, you take all these groups, Mel, and, you know, what have you got? 
What have you really got? A tiny minority. A tiny minority. Uh, I, I'm at a loss, me. Why, you know, it doesn't just go click. Swarm effect. You know, everybody suddenly wakes up in the morning and goes, why are we killing people? Why are we living in this world? You know, my life is based upon somebody else getting an old. You know, I'm living in the UK, me. You know, what is our major now export? What is the UK? We've no real manufacturing, unless it's something to do with blowing the shite out of summer. We're good at that. But, you know, what is our major export? You know, what is it? Can we sustain ourselves for food on this land now? Where does our power come from? You know, I mean, most of it is produced here in the UK, but it's sold to us through other countries, foreign countries. They use that to get us upset with foreigners. Oh, well, she's South African and they did that in the diamond mines in Twitter. Oh, shut up. We're all now in this together, whichever way we look at it. And you know the weird thing? The so-called hierarchy's in it with us. They're in it with us. No one's getting out of it. Yeah. For sure. And I'd just like to say, Queen Elizabeth, uh, Madam Lizard, if that is what you are, could you please return the diamonds to the people of South Africa that you stole, particularly the big fat diamond and a crown that's in a tower purely for the uh, pleasure of tourists? Um, you know, <laughs> it doesn't belong to you. It was just taken. It wasn't, it wasn't even paid for. It was given to her as a gift, apparently. Yeah, and, and, and the entire land of, of Australia back to the Aborigine people. <laughs> they should, sur they should surrender no, no, to the interests of the United listen. States of America. In fact, I will offer these um, the Queen, uh, trotters, uh, and baby eating and all, um, unconditional surrender. And she can surrender now. My name's <laughs> Paul Aiden, and, and I will offer them unconditional surrender uh, without <laughs> any retribution. <laughs> well, I'm serious, Mel. I mean, somebody's got to offer them a way out. Oh, do you know? I, I think they were listening then. We, we, we dropped a couple of viewers, but it's gone back up again now. No, they were the Royals. Um, they were the Royals. I tell you, most of them... MI5 picked up on a word there they didn't like, so they put, tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I do. That's the way I look at it. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for retribution. I'm just wanting them to end that reign of tyranny. That's all. End it. End it. Let's yeah. move along. Let, let's build a new foundation built on compassion, built on, on understanding. Well, not even wrong. No, comprehension of the words. Let's realise we've been duped by the very words we're speaking. You know, well, why not? You know, it's not as if we're going to starve. It's not as if we're going to not have planes and cars and buses and houses. You know, what do people think is going to happen? You know, the electricity supply is going to go off. There won't be no more internet. Uh, and the government's going to force us all to rising up and taking over. In which, where are you? You know, where are you? You know, next you'll be telling me they're going to put the revolution started Monday morning on the BBC television. It's preposterous. It, it, it isn't going to happen like that. It, we're not all going to have to come together and walk out on the streets. And it's, it's not going to happen. Because we've done that. That's happened all over Earth. Tinnaman Square. It, what happened? Nothing. They just enforced, give them, they just got a reason to get more weapons and suppress the people further. You know, we've seen it. On, That's Bob. exactly why they encourage uprisings, though, isn't it? And they're the instigators of violence on the streets because then they can introduce a whole bunch more leg legislation to bring in way more control than they had in the first place. You know, like they're trying to get black boxes in all the internet service providers so that they can spy on all your internet. You know, in the name of it being anti terrorist. Well, who's the terrorist? It's the governments that are the terrorists. Everyone else is a freedom fighter trying to get away from it. Yet they label us terrorists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm labelled as a domestic extremist. Well, I'm not extreme. That is so funny. <laughs> that sounds like you, you can't help clean your house, Bob. That's like, oh, I'm, I'm a domesticate. I can't stop dust. I've never heard anything so ridiculous. I'm sorry. Oh, my. I wonder what they're calling me. Do you know, I know I'm on the red list. I can't fly to the States. I cannot, because I have to apply for a visa on a South African passport, you see. Uh, I've never been able to get one. Well, that's probably a good thing, really. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't really want to go there, but it's, uh, you know, it comes up necessary. Sometimes I get invited to all sorts of things and I just can't get a seem to get a visa. 
to get into the States, but never mind. Um, hopefully, uh, when I try to visit the UK again, they'll let me back in because they don't let my friend Kevin Annett into the UK, even though he's Canadian and technically Canada is actually a British state. So therefore, he should have no issues getting in and out of um, in and out of the UK. But because he actually has eyewitness testimony, um, which he's recorded from someone who actually saw the Queen come to his school in Canada and take away kids that were never seen again. Um, Kevin, and it's not allowed into the country. You know, you mentioned Canada. They, um, I know they, um, the, uh, a lot of court of law. I don't like to call it common law because there's no such thing as common law. It's one of my pet hates. Uh, law is common to all. Um, and, and, and in a, what they call a common law court, uh, in Canada, they issued warrants um, for genocide. Uh, on the uh, English royals and, and Vatican and so forth. Um, you know, it's, it's all right being able to do this, but without anything to, to actually enforce these warrants, um, you know, what, what 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 good does it do? Um, again, Dom said a few times, you're fighting in their arena. You, you, you're literally, and they just changed the rules. Uh, we've had this with the Misuse of Drugs Act and, and Cannabis Era, uh, Richard Perry, um, on medical necessity, uh, any one case after case after case, so they changed the law. <laughs> it's like you can't. They changed the law. Well, no, they didn't. They actually said that's not English law. Well, it isn't English law because you're dealing with an act, an act of law uh, under English law or the law. Actually, it's not English. It's the law. Um, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't have borders, or, or um, it doesn't, uh, and it states no loss, no harm, no deception, no breach of the peace. And the only thing written into that is taught, which when asked, was described as love thy neighbour. Love thy neighbour. That's law, written into law. So... How do we work all the way up to bombing innocent women and children in far off lands? How do we leap from law to murder, death, tyranny? It says no loss, no harm, no deception, no breach of the peace. Legislation is what's done it. Do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, law, law isn't even written, is it? Not in those words. It is the precedent set by the court. No, that law is Legis written, legislation, legislation is written and it requires your consent for it to have the force of law. No, it is written in law, though. Definitely, it's written in law. I mean, just wiki it. You know, type in the word law and you, it is written there. Um, but it's not under common law. It just says law. You see, that law is common to everyone. It doesn't matter whether you're the prince or the king or the trotted queen. You know, it just really doesn't matter. Um, or, or you're a road sweeper, you know, it doesn't matter what, what you, the law is common to all. It's not actually common law. Um, no one is above or below it. And that, like I say, where's that gone? <laughs> what happened there? You know, this is, this is what they call the land of England. Mel said it, the English, no, they were, they were Romans. The English were all wiped out by the Christians. <laughs> well, they slept at night. Um, the last of the northern tribes were wiped out. We're Romans. That's what we are. We've lived under Roman law. You know, a mate of mine, Fettel, I am heard from him for a while. If you're out there, Fettel, I hope you're doing okay, mate. Um, and he described it. He said that, well, the Romans, the Roman slaves got a better deal, really. I mean, we have to pay for his own housing. They didn't. You know, the, the slave master housed them. And he fed them, and we have to feed ourselves. You know, okay, they had to work. They had to work. And I suppose you could have had a bad master. He might beat you. But for the most, they were good masters because they, they got better work out of the slaves if they looked after them. If you were a breeding slave, you got two weeks, two days off a week. And, 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 and everyone got a day off to go down to the amphitheater and watch people do whatever it is. And you got a bit of pocket money. Not now. We have to pay for everything. We've got a worse deal. It's got worse. It's not got better. It's got worse. 
You know, where's all the wealth of, 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 of England? You know, where's all the manufacturing capabilities gone? You know, the cotton industry, the coal industry, you know, the, the industry, where's it gone? <laughs> in a hole in Afghanistan looking for a man who poos in a bucket and lives in a cave? Come on! Come on, the access of evil. We're going to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on a war on tyranny. A war on tyranny? Hang on a minute. Have I gone nuts? What does war create? <laughs> tyranny. Poverty. War creates poverty. War, war is expensive and destructive. It is the most destructive force on our planet. And that's what it's... I don't know if you guys have ever seen, there's a lovely series of films that's come out called Skulls, um, re referencing the skull and bones, of course, the secret society at Yale. And if you haven't seen it, please do yourselves a favour. And you'll notice in this um, series called Skulls, a series of a trilogy of three films, Skulls 1, 2, and 3, they actually have written on the back wall of the tomb, which is what was represented as the tomb in this particular films, um, they have war, just the word war, nothing else, you don't see anything else, no symbolism, anything else except the word war. And it's very interesting because it seems that that is the study dame uh, is always uh, to have us warring. And at no point in like the last 2,000 years is there a time when somewhere on our planet a war has not been raging. And if you look at all those wars, you can tie them all more or less pretty much back to the Vatican. And to be honest with you, the people who head up sort of the Secret Intelligence Service, um, CIA and various world governments, most of them are Knights of Malta, Knights of St. John. And they are the oldest order surviving from the Crusades. It's still their crusade. It's still their holy war. The Holy Alliance are still waging a crusade on humanity. It's never ended. It's just kept going on. We've had individual um, uh, campaigns in the crusade that people have publicly labeled on the mainstream media, World War I, World War II, anglo Boer War, whatever. It's still the same war. It's not any different. It's not different wars. It's yeah. one big campaign against humanity. You mentioned the the, uh, uh, the Knights of Malta. The um, and many might know these are the assassins, the Pope assassins. Yes, um, you speciality have, of mine, actually. So, uh, really? Oh well, I'm so glad we got onto this. Have, you would have heard perhaps of the, the worst of them all, the Black Knight, of the Knights of Malta. Um, this gentleman, an effigy of him, is right in my local council offices. This was his stomping ground. Yes, he's linked to the Grey family, the same dead hand of the elite that we are in current conflict with. The Grey family? Yep, the Greys. Ah. They were stomping around, uh, I traced them back recently, um, to the year 848, um, where they were in uh, Ireland and Wales. Um, in Scotland, they were seizing lands there. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Black Knight of the Knights of Malta, he stands right in the middle of the Arcadia, where we have a, a, their Masonic symbology everywhere. It's everywhere. It's anybody who can see it, it's blatantly obvious. You can't miss it. You walk straight into the council offices and they show you their effigy of what they aspire to be. A murdering, thieving tyrant, raping tyrant, the Black Knight. He, they actually put him right in the middle of the arcade uh, and all the people complained. They complained that they didn't want this tyrant uh, as the representation of the town. So the council put it inside the council offices <laughs> under a glass door next to a garden that you can't enter made from Masonic steps. I didn't know about any of this, Mel. This is all like, wow, you are. But I, I'm not new to it. You know, I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. It's just so blatantly obvious. And it is. Like I say, the people of my time couldn't, they didn't even notice and build a mountain. And, you know, how are they going to notice some, like, orchestrate a war in a foreign land? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to have sympathy for these people. Well, I'm talking about the masses of England. You know, we've got to have sympathy for them. We've got to kind of, I don't know, coax them into a beautiful potential future because it is. It is. Once we get away from all that energy we put into, that, I don't know what you want to call it, demonic, murder, killing, you know, and we just start to become creative. 
Well, let me, let me just say that I've never believed that we can change the world. And it's somewhat not ignorant to believe that we can. All we can ever really do is change ourselves and be co-creators of our own reality and try to create a good world around us. And I think that also uh, comes with respecting that, hey, not everyone is evolving as fast as I am or not everyone is as up to speed with the knowledge or even has an interest in it. And we have to respect that too. You know, it comes with respecting free will. Maybe it's not their path to get involved with this. I think this is a sacred path that people like you and I and many of us are on. Um, and perhaps it's not for everybody. You know, perhaps we are lucky to have uh, been given the privilege to come to know the truth. Oh, I was talking to a mute microphone for a second. Now, look, we've got, we've got a power struggle going on here now. Uh, I was just deciding whether we should continue to talk or we should let Dom come in and do his show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop coming in, wonderful. So yeah, he's actually an hour late, but on time. So hey, brilliant, Mel. Um, with you, Less you know, you uh, Bob, I mean anchor man Bob in the background. <laughs> I can't. He is. He's the anchor man. He hardly ever gets a word in, does he? But no, but on. it's all cool. We're back on, Bob. We've got another hour or so. Um, we'll do that. Don may have run late, so we'll pick it up for an hour at the end of Don's show. Mel, give yourself a plug before we drop off and give it to... Uh, yes, lovely to speak to you guys again, and let's do it soon, yeah? It's been great. Nice one, love. All right. Love to Dom. Love to you all. Speak soon. Bye. All right. Thank you. Um, commonly known as, where you go, mate? Are you there? Hello, mate. Yeah. Can you hear me? You're beautiful in audio, sir. And well done. You're actually an hour late, but on time, Don. Yeah, I managed to get all the way down from the other side of England to London, uh, mm. managed to get here mm. and able to crack on. Now, I've been telling everybody that your mum sent you to get your hair cut. <laughs> That's why you were actually late. But, hey, they know I'm only joking, Don.